precisely the same time that Barclays sold 238 million of so-called range logo loans to Europe County. The interest repayment cost these loans to the market is the base rate, the base interest rate and might all go down. So we have on one hand an arm of Barclays making huge amounts of money for themselves and the bank from driving interest rates down and profiteering from these moves, when another part of the bank is earning huge amounts of money from selling its loans that will cost more than the interest if the rates go down. This cannot be right. In light of these, another recent call for mentions for conspiracy and fines for interest rate rigging. Will the executive member please reconsider his decision not to take legal action against Barclays for fraud and damages and for us to recover the millions of pounds that Barclays <coughs> and other banks have cheated from Euro residents and stop them cheating them further in the future? I'd like to thank the Chancellor for this question. I'd like to thank the Chancellor for this question. The first thing we have to consider about LIBOR is that a whole series of financial transactions depend upon LIBOR. Um, when I worked um, in the Core House Association, most of the things I've worked in um, most of the loans that they actually undertake, um, there's a clause to say that interest rate is determined by LIBOR. In fact, if you have an interest rate and overdraft that is determined by LIBOR, if in individual contracts that I've often seen, the clauses about penalty interest include a clause about LIBOR. So no doubt these individuals have been found guilty, but there's no doubt that LIBOR affects a whole series of individuals throughout the country, if not internationally. So that's the first thing we have to say. Okay? The second question is, did the action of these individuals lead to a material difference in our interest on LIBOR? I suspect not, because on that individual track, in, on that individual case, the move was quite minuscule. But let's park back to one side. I think I've, um, the major point I've got is that, as I've said, LIBOR affects everyone. If you look at the London Bar of Newham, the residents of the London Bar of Newham, amongst the lowest paid individuals, if you look at the median income, East Ham and West Ham, parliamentary directory, lowest paid people. These people pay council tax. In fact, we have increased council tax for a number of years. We appreciate that council tax is progressive. We're trying to protect those individuals' interests. Is it correct or fair that the London Bar of Newham taking council taxpayers' money is going to cost to do this case? Seriously, the Barclays, we're talking about court, court of appeal, Supreme Court. We are talking about paying the best experts to work on this in the city. They are uh, from the big four finance and accountancy firms. It is going to cost us millions to do this. So I have to ask the question, is it fair and equitable for the taxpayers of the London Bar of Europe to fly a kite taking on LIBOR on this case? I just don't think it's fair. Why should the capital taxpayers of Newham do this? I'm quite willing, if other people want to come in and, and you know, we can have discussions, I think there could be an argument about us participating in a large class action. <coughs> but for the London Borough of Newham to do it by themselves, John, OPM, other people's money. And we had a duty to make sure that we got value for money for the council taxpayers in London of Newham. So the simple answer is no. Dr. Klein, do you have a supplementary question for the professor to fly in and make Councillor Hudson? Yes, yes, indeed, sir. Um, now, I'd like to thank the uh, for putting forward his, his, his response. Um, in view of his comments about um, you know, the uh, pitfalls of taking this action, you know, in the past, myself and Councillor Yes, have we put the Executive Member of Finance and we've offered to introduce the Executive Member of Finance and Councillor Hus Hudson to um, renowned experts on exactly how it would be possible uh, to prove that we've been cheated and robbed by the banks and would he reconsider uh, his decision to decline this meeting and meet the people 
who also, I understand, could even produce a no win, no fee um, solution for to get ready to get our money back. I'm going to ask you a question about no win, no fee. Um, I'm always deeply suspicious of people who offer you a free lunch, no win, no fee. There is always a cost. As I said, John, we have, you know, in, in other meetings, we have empty discussions with the LGA about looking into this. I mean, if there was a, seri if there was a serious appetite <coughs> with other organisations coming in, I think it's something that we would look at. But the London Bar knew by itself, spending millions of pounds, giving millions of pounds to to, to lawyers and accountants in the city. Me Come on, John. Me Come on, John. Me That's too. enough. That's my way. Thank you. <coughs> Item 11. Speeches from members. I've accepted two requests from members to make a speech. These will be dealt with in order that they will see. I'll ask each member to make their speech in turn and just for five minutes. I invite Pastor Roxana Fias to make a speech on Brexit and education, the challenges and opportunities for the world, London and our country. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to make a formal speech. I'd like to encourage councillors and states to attend a event taking place outside Forest Gate Station this evening at half eight in response to a racist attack uh, on a new resident when he was out <coughs> uh, campaigning on a political issue. And I think that that's uh, a very good use of members' times so and I'm encouraging this to attend if they are able to in a show of solidarity against racism. Thank you. Madam Chair, didn't quite hear what was said there. Could, could that be repeated? Sorry, I didn't quite understand what you said. 